Matt, uh, our next speaker is not at the desk. What on earth is going on know. here? I don't know. That, that person is a slacker. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. You know what? It's me. Uh, <laughs> Total oh, slacker. Great. All right. You know what? I'm going to take over. I'm going to I'm gonna go along. So All I'm right. just going to start it up. Is that cool? Have fun. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. All right. Here we go. Bye. All right. So we are going to start a whirlwind tour of building.net apps in Azure. It's going to be crazy time. We're going to go along. We're going to talk about stuff that you may already know with app services and SQL Server, and then we're going to transition over into stuff like, as Scott was talking about before, Azure Container Apps. We're going to talk about managed identity. We're going to talk about app configuration. We're going to talk about container registry. We're going to go all over the place. So let's get started with this. All right, so here we go. The whirlwind tour of building .NET apps with Azure. My name is Matt Sokup. I'm a principal cloud advocate here at Microsoft. So let's start talking about what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk first about building the app with some familiar services, as I mentioned before. We're going to do app service, Azure SQL, blob storage, actually put our images in there, and then put a CDN around it. And what a CDN does is it puts our images out at the edge of Azure so they're reserved very quickly to our clients. And then the whirlwind gets started. And what that whirlwind's gonna do, we're gonna use managed identity. We're going to put in Azure Functions. We're gonna put in Azure Signal R. We're gonna get in App Config, Key Vault, Container Registry, and then Container App. So it's gonna be a whirlwind. We're just gonna be going super fast. All right, so let's take a quick peek of what we are going to build so you have an idea. All right, we're going to have a couple of microservices, and what I'm going to do is just warm them up right here to make sure they are running, and then I am going to open up the app that we're going to build. And as soon as that warms up and brings it up, you're going to see what we're going to have is a pizza shop. And it's going to be just a plain old pizza shop, nothing special going on. It's just a Blazor server app with the file new scaffold out, but it's calling out to two microservices. And the first one displays a menu. So it displays a menu, brings back an image of a pizza, and then we can add that pizza to an order, which calls a cart microservice. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm really keeping the .NET code itself super duper simple. This way we can see what code we do add to talk to Azure and do Azure specific stuff. We can just call that out. And so keeping the website kind of out of our Azure. But in real life, we know we would mix them all together. So here I have my pizza, and I hit place order. And now I can see where's my order. Because you know what? I'm not patient. And I want to see, hey, I want to make sure the pizza shop has my order. And I want to see if it's baking or whatnot. So what I can do here is I'm going to make this over on one side. And then I'm going to take an open API Azure function. And I can actually go through, try it out and then see the status. Automatically update, execute it, and you can see, hey, the kitchen has my order. Status two, order's being prepped, and we can go three, it's in the oven, and four, it is on its way. So signal R coming over. So we have a bunch of different, um, different options going on here so that we have on our whole PizzaConf application. So, Fairly simple, but we're building it with a lot of Azure services on the back end. So let's take a peek here what we're talking about again. First off, we're starting up with app service, database, blob storage, CDN, and then we're going to get crazy and talk about pretty much Azure Functions, Signal R, Key Vault, and App Config, and also then Container Registry and then Container Apps. So our very first one is Super duper simple. We have those three microservices sitting over in app services. Blazor server for our web UI, and then we have two web APIs, which are minimal APIs. One is serving for the checkout. The other one is hitting over on the menu. They both hit an Azure SQL database. Now, what's cool about this SQL database is that it's serverless which means it spins all the way down to zero if it's not being used at all. So that's actually really neat in that it actually it saves you a lot of money 
if, you, if you're not using it. And then over on the right hand side is that we have a blob storage. So massive blob storage, massive image storage, not a ton of money that where you can put just a bunch of images in there and then we're serving it with a CDN. So that CDN, Content Delivery Network, puts all our images out at the edge of Azure. So now anytime one of our clients needs to get an image, all they really have to do is hit the Azure edge and then the Azure edge, either our images are going to be cached or we're going to be able to communicate on the Azure backbone super duper fast, faster than your fiber at home, super duper fast to go hit our image storage, our, our blob storage. So actually, I want to show you that because that comes for free, essentially, not free free, but for free when we're setting up in a .NET sense. All right, so I have over here, let me make this so you can see it just a tad bit better, scroll it up, and then all the way down, I have a storage account. And in that storage account, of course, I am going to have over here a blob service. And then I can see I have pizza images in it, and I have my various images. So I open up Pizza One, and then I can edit it, and there's the image itself. If I go to Overview, copy it, and you can see the URL for it as well. So it's blob, pizzaconf.blob.core, windows.net. But what's nice about this, what's super nice, is when I go back to my pizzaconf storage account, I can actually, in front of it, put in, if I type in just CDN, and this is neat. This is still within the storage account. I can open up an Azure CDN and put that in front of everything. So I already have it created. And it's once I do it, it's just pizzaconf.azureedge.net. And then my CDN is right in front of it. And all I have to do is change what my um, URLs are. And if I open up Lots of Matza and then do Open Image and New Tab, you can see it's now pizzaconf.azure.net. It has the same pizza images because it's in the pizza images container and it just serves. So I'm just changing the URL and so there I go. Super fast, super easy to get things served out of a CDN rather than having to come directly from blob storage. Out on the edge makes it faster without having to do any .NET code. So you tuned in to .NET Conf to learn how to do something without .NET code. All right. So also, I want to show off the website real quick what we're doing. There's nothing fancy here, just a couple APIs and a Blazor server website. And it's all the web APIs itself. All we have here are adding an entity framework into it. And then we have a bunch of um, map gets for it and map delete for the cart, getting things in and out. And in the Blazor server itself, I have a couple of uh, services which call it to the web clients, HTTP clients. You can see we're just getting the cart out here. And over in the program, what I'm opening up is just doing a builder.configuration to get the menu URL out so I know which the menu service to call. So there's nothing super, super, this is pretty straightforward what we're doing. And so once I do it, deploy it up to Azure App Services in a Docker file. So I'm using Docker, my app service is Linux based. And the reason why I'm calling out that I'm doing it in Docker because this hasn't become important down the line. So, but it's Docker, runs on my machine, kind of takes care of that. All right, so that's what we have. Now, let's start adding, see how we can add the real-time order tracking to it because now we're gonna make the app a little bit more cloud native. And so when we start talking about what is cloud native, you ask three people, you're gonna get 10 different answers. But my first answer to what cloud native is, is that it's you're designing for putting your applications in the cloud and you have to take the cloud peculiarities into account when you do that. 
So you're going to want to make sure that you're scalable. You're going to want to make sure that you're robust and you have other things that you have, could take advantage of that are out there in the cloud that you might not have otherwise. Now, Azure SignalR is in Blazor Server, but there's also an Azure portion of it too that we can build upon. So that's what we're going to do for our, for our real-time order tracking is that we're going to put Azure SignalR to facilitate the real-time messaging between connected clients. To do that, I'm going to build an Azure function. Now, the function is going to kind of serve as what I'm going to call the broker. So the clients are going to be able to register with this broker and to let SignalR know, hey, I'm listening. You can send me messages. And then the function is actually going to take and send that message itself. So it's going to be kind of like this broker sitting in the middle. And then the Pizza Web, the Blazor server app, is going to serve as our client to receive these messages. And this is what our diagram now looks like. And I'm going to open up the laser pointer and show off what we have. Here's our broker, Azure SignalR, external client, and this new line with the star in it shows the real-time messaging going on the Blazor Pizza server. So I'm pretty proud of my PowerPoint skills with all the dotted lines and the stars and everything. And this is what we have going on. All right, so let's actually see this in action. All right, so I'm going to jump back out to my Visual Studio, and then I'm going to open up a different branch for it, where all the code is sitting for my Azure function. And you can see I have the Azure function added here where it wasn't before. And what's neat about this is what Azure functions are is, in a nutshell, really quick, is that they respond to external events that happen. So whether that's an HTTP event hitting it, or whether something gets added to an Azure queue or a Cosmos DB, something happens and then the Azure function gets kicked off. They're also serverless, so they can scale down to zero. However, what's nice about it, though, is once it gets kicked off, you get a strongly typed variable of what happened. So in this case, you get the HTTP trigger. So I'm saying, all right, this particular function gets kicked off on our web request. I get the full HTTP request coming in. And because I'm making it for Signal R, I add a Signal R NuGet package, and then I just add this attribute to my function. Now, Azure Functions then takes care of all the hard work, the plumbing, of hooking me up to Signal R, of newing up the Signal R connection info object for me, and all I have to do is return, return it. So this is really the token of telling me how to connect to everything. And all I have to do is supply the connection string, the signal R, and then tell it the hub name of what I want to do. And then this is how I actually return things. And it, again, is HTTP trigger. And then way over here, and this is even pretty cool, even nicer with Azure Functions, I can do routes, just like you would do in uh, ASP.NET. Again, getting the HTTP request and then strongly typed uh, input parameters. In this case, order ID and status. And then all I do need to do to return it, because I have these bindings, is say, all right, I'm going to put everything into a iAsync collector, which happens to be SignalR messages, and then just put my data into it and just add async to it. So SignalR or Azure Functions takes care of all that plumbing for me. Now, one more thing that I do want to call out. It's that all these open API attributes. A good friend of mine, Justin Yu on my team, added the open API Azure Functions extension at build either last year or the year before. Regardless, what this does, it creates all the open API spec for us and also the Azure or the Swagger tooling. So we can get in and actually test out our Azure Functions, at least the HTTP triggered ones, from a Swagger tool set. Awesome, super cool stuff. And um, again, another NuGet package. And then you just have to decorate things with the open API parameter. All right, so then to consume, to consume the um, signal R, I have that down in my pizzaconf.web and it's in the tracking.razor page. Again, there's a NuGet client package I added, ASP.NET Core, 
signalr.client and I haven't restored. That's why I got the squiggly. But all I'm doing here is just saying, all right, give me a hub connection. And then my on initialize async, all I'm doing is saying, all right, start it up or making sure it's not already started. And then saying, all right, I'm going to build it. Build it with the uh, tracking URL that I have in my app settings. Make sure I can automatically reconnect. So this is all built into the um, Hub Connection Builder. And the automatic reconnect, building for resiliency, taking my cloud stuff in mind when I build it, and then saying on tracking message, whenever I get that from my Azure function, so when I send it out here, I'm saying, all right, signal R, say this is a new message coming out. That's what you want to call it, the target, new message. When it comes out, my client, listen for a function or message that says it's a new message and it's going to have this tracking message type coming to it. Once I got it, just populate some variables and um, away I go. And then I start the whole hub connection up. And now I've added real-time communication between my client and an Azure function. Now one thing I did kind of skip over and I'm going to kind of skip over the entire talk is authentication. So when I'm sending these connections out, I'm sending it to whoever registered. I should have added authentication to the whole thing, but that's another talk. That's like the whirlwind tour part two. But here we go. All righty. So now we're back in and we want to talk about, notice how we had connection strings all over the place, right? We can get rid of those. And we can get rid of those with things called managed identity. Now, what a managed identity does, it gives your Azure services, it makes them like people. <laughs> it animates your Azure services. Now, what it does is it puts them into Azure Directory, and then what you can do then is give them, your Azure services, permissions to get access to other Azure services. So now we can start getting rid of, like our Azure functions, we had to know what the signal our connection string was. We can get rid of that. We can just have that somewhere up. We can um, start getting rid of, if we had to talk to container registry, which we'll talk in a bit, we can just say, hey, this Azure service, we can have pull permission on a container registry. So we can start granting permissions everywhere. And it's also developer friendly too, and I'll show you how. All right, now we can get into, we have things that are, we kind of got rid of our connection strings with a managed identity. How do we actually get them out? We still have to pull them out. We still have to say, all right, I want to get at my stuff. And that's where we can start talking with configuration values and secrets. And to make things nice, we want to put them in one spot. And this is where Azure Key Vault and eventually App Config starts coming in. So what is Key Vault? Key Vault is a centralized and secure secret store. You can version secrets in here. So eventually, like when you leak a secret, when I say you, I mean like me, if I'm at a coffee shop and somebody's you know, shoulder surfing and sees a connection string or something, I can version it, redo it. Role-based access to it. App config. App config, think of it as a super duper app settings.json, but in Azure. And what's neat about that is eventually you're gonna start scaling on, you're gonna have different app services all over the place, several of them. They can all go in and read the same Azure app config and get their settings out of there. What's cool then, as Azure App Config, you can talk to Key Vault, and it's um, built right in with seamless.NET integration where it fits right into the pipeline. So .NET, when you're writing your code, it's just like accessing the app settings JSON. All right, so that's what we're gonna end up building now. We have a new rectangle in here, and that rectangle, broker is covered by it, all our app services are covered by it, and what we're gonna do is that we are going to read out app config, which is going to talk to you key vault, but it's really going to be just kind of seamless to our application. So let's take a peek. All right, so the first thing I want to show you is how that we would actually set up a managed identity. And so I'm going to open up like the PizzaConf checkout, which is one of our uh, microservices that does the checkout itself. So, so actually to set it up and say, hey, I want you to be part of Active Directory, I would search for identity and then turn it on. And now it gets a principal ID. It's, it's like, I am now an object. 
I have, <laughs> I can do stuff, I have rights. And then next, after that, we can do things such as go to Key Vault, which is going to be way down here. And then I have access policies within Key Vault. And you can see underneath application, all my pizza conf dash, they're in there. And they have certain access policies. They don't have everything. Like they don't have key permissions or certificate permissions. They just have like get and set out of the secret permissions. So these applications are limited in what they can do to Key Vault. They can get to it and they can get at secrets, but they can't get at everything. So let's take a quick look at the secrets. Like I said, like my checkout DB connection strings in here, it has a version. So if I do leak it, I can create a new version, cycle my connection string, but I can still access it. So my code doesn't know necessarily that I've leaked my secret. I can still keep on working with it. It's all developer friendly in that manner. All right, so then jumping up over to app config then. Again, access control. If I look at my role assignments, you're going to find out that data reader has my pizza conf dashes in it. Cool. Gave them access to it to be reading stuff out of it. And if I look into the configuration explorer, all right. One thing I do want to call out is right down here, that little key. That key means it talks to Key Vault, which is neat. So that talks to Key Vault. So what it is, it's just kind of passing through over to Key Vault. And I can give it a new name as well. And then I have stuff like cart URL in here, which doesn't necessarily mean it's protected. It just means it has a value in it. Keys mean it's protected, has super great encryption. Cart URL just has like plain text, something that we're not necessarily worried about leaking. Let's see how we would access it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the checkout API, open up the program, and then I have added a two NuGet packages, one that's called Azure App, Azure App Config. Let me double check to make sure that's what it is. Packages. It is called, well, one's called Azure.Identity, and the other one is Microsoft.Azure.AppConfig. So those two NuGet packages, once they're together, let me access Key Vault and App Config. So when I'm setting up my builder in my, in my pipeline here, all I'm going to say is, you know what? Add Azure App Config to it, and then send in what the URL is going to be. So in the connections options, they just say, hey, what? You know what? I want the App Config URL. And then this right here, default connection string. This is what's super cool. It's saying, you remember when I had things set up as like, you can read app config? What it's saying here, because Matt, Matt, I could read the app config as well, Azure app config. It's using who I'm logged in to as Visual Studio to pass that up, pass the token up. But when I deploy this application, it's also going to use who that application is, the managed identity, that token, and send that up. And so in my um, pizza, Checkout, I'm saying select, it's just going to bring back the checkout DB string for me. And then right here, I'm saying, you know what? Also send over the Azure credentials, the default Azure credentials to Key Vault as well. So if I didn't do this configure Key Vault, Azure App Config wouldn't know what to send over. So right here, this is the key, so to speak, of getting to App Config and Key Vault. So this way, now we can store everything up in the cloud as far as our connection strings and, and our regular app configs and get at them. All right, so we are whirlwinding around and we're gonna keep on going. We have one last thing to talk about and that's a one-stop shop for all your microservices and that's gonna be Azure Container Apps. And what I love about Azure Container Apps is one, they're containers, right? So I mentioned before that we deployed everything to app service and containers. Well, now we can just can kind of lift and shift them to Azure Container Apps. But Azure Container Apps are serverless, which means they can scale down to zero amongst other things. They can also scale up real easily and they can scale up based on CADA rules, which is Kubernetes event-driven architecture, I think, but they have a bunch of rules that 
define how it spins up, which is based off of Kubernetes um, rules. So you think of container apps as built around um, Kubernetes, but real easy. You can version your container apps, and it also integrates with Azure Container Registry. You can think of Container Registry as like a Docker hub. Put your containers out there, can pull back what you want. And then this is what I want to call out nice and easy Dapper integration. So what Dapper does, it gives you a way to build microservices that's essentially easy. You can do things like PubSub, you can hit like cache, you can even do things like service discovery. So I'm going to show that off really quick on how I would do service discovery with Dapper install. And all it is, I'm going down my pizza conf and I'm opening up program.cs. And then when I'm using, newing up my HTTP clients, what I'm saying is, hey, I got my Dapper, I, I want to get a Dapper ID out and I happen to be getting that Dapper ID from app config. I'm just going to say, hey, my URL is going to be localhost, so I'm not going to actually put that menu URL into app config at all. So it's going to be HTTP localhost 3500. Pass in a Dapper app ID into the config headers. Same thing for the um, cart service. So both the cart service and the menu service due to Dapper have the same HTTP URL. They just have a different request header. So now Dapper knows enough to find these services for me because they're all deployed up into .NET Conf and I have a container app environment with three container apps deployed to it and Dapper is enabled and you can see the DAP ID is that and then Dapper container apps, the environment knows how to route them and Dapper does a whole lot more and it's it's amazing. So we whirlwind tour. We got through all of it. That's what we look like right now. And there it is. Find out more at that aka ms at the bottom dot net conf slash whirlwind. Everything you ever wanted and more. It's all gonna be there. Whew. I'm Matt Sokup, and we did it. Whirlwind tour building.net apps in Azure.